Hello there, Miss Berber here. Trigonometric functions can be defined in two different and equivalent ways. This lesson titled Angle Measure begins the study of trig from the triangle approach. Both the unit circle and the triangle approach are needed as the different approaches are required for different applications. The objectives of this lesson are 1. Be able to determine angle measure and corresponding radian measure. 2. Understand angle placement in standard position. 3. Be able to determine length of a circular arc. 4. Be able to find the area of a circular sector. 5. Be able to find linear and angular speed. And 6. Be able to find linear speed from angular speed and vice versa. Before we begin our study of angle measurement in earnest, let's refresh on angles from geometry. An angle consists of two rays with a common vertex. We often interpret an angle as a rotation of the ray r sub 1 onto r sub 2. In this case, r sub 1 is called the initial side and r sub 2 is called the terminal side of the angle. If the rotation is counterclockwise, then the angle is considered positive, and if the rotation is clockwise, the angle is considered negative. Roman numeral 1, angle measure. Radiant measure. If a circle of radius 1 is drawn with the vertex of an angle at its center, then the measure of this angle in radians is the length of the arc that subtends the angle. Relationship between degrees and radians. 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. One radian is equal to 180 divided by pi degrees. And one degree is equal to pi over 180 radians. Number one, to convert degrees to radians, multiply by pi over 180. Two, to convert radians to degrees, multiply by 180 over pi. Let's observe. One radian is approximately 67.296 degrees, and one degree is approximately 0 0.0175 radians. Convert the following. Part A, 200 degrees to radians. To convert degrees to radians, we take the degrees and multiply it by a factor of 1, which is pi, over 180 degrees. The degrees cancel. 200 over 180 reduces to 10 ninths pi. So 200 degrees is equal to 10 pi 9 radians. Part B. Convert pi over 18 to degrees. So to Convert to degrees, we multiply by a factor of 180 degrees over pi. And let's see, the pi's cancel, and 180 over 18 will be 10 degrees. Roman numeral 2, angles in standard position. An angle is in standard position if it is drawn in the xy plane with its vertex at the origin and its initial side on the positive x-axis. We say that two angles in standard position are coterminal if their sides coincide. Find the angle coterminal with the following given angles. A. 733 degrees co-terminal between 0 and 360 degrees. So we're going to have to do a couple of revolutions to get it to coincide to a measurement that's less than 360 degrees. So if I subtract 360 degrees, that'll give 373 degrees and it still doesn't fit in the given interval. So let's do another entire revolution, subtract that, and we get 13 degrees. So what we find out is that if you go up 13 degrees in the counterclockwise direction, it is coterminal with going 1, 
two. And it still ends up at the same place, 733 degrees, 13 degrees. Part B, negative seven pi over three, we need to find a coterminal angle that is positive in between zero and two pi. So let's do revolutions. Um, in radians, that's two pi, and in degrees, it's 360 degrees. So with negative seven pi over three, let's add two pi. See if that'll give us a positive value, and it doesn't. It still gives us a minus pi over three. Now we know that's in the fourth quadrant, but it's negative, and it has to be expressed between zero and two pi. So let's go ahead and add another two pi to it, and that'll give us five pi over three. So the angle that is coterminal with negative seven pi over three in the required or desired interval is phi pi over three. So if we go phi pi over three, that is coterminal with traveling in the clockwise direction, which will make it negative, negative seven pi over three. The circle displayed has radius r, has a central angle of theta, and arc length s marked on it. An angle whose radian measure is theta is subtended by an arc that is the fraction theta of 2 pi of the circumference of the circle. Thus, in a circle of radius r, the length s of an arc that subtends the angle theta is given by, so the subtended arc length is theta, we want a portion of the circumference, times the circumference of the circle. Circumference of the circle, which would then be theta over 2 pi, and the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, and when we solve for that, the 2 pi's cancel and we get theta r. So the length that subtends a central angle in radians of theta is given by s equals pi r. Find the length of the arc that subtends a central angle of 45 degrees in a circle of 10 meters. Just so that we have a good visual, I have drawn a circle, picked my center, I'm attempting to eyeball about 45 degrees. It's not accurate, so I'm labeling it. The radius is 10, and the problem instructs us to find the length along the outer rim. The formula for this arc length is r theta. We have the r as 10 meters. Now, we must be very careful because theta has to be in radians. So 45 degrees is equal to pi over 4. So the length of that squiggly looking arc length is going to be 10 times pi divided by 4, which will reduce to, to exactly 5 pi over 2. Now, that's an exact value, but if you needed a decimal approximation, then you'll need to use your calculator to get it. Before you do any trig work on a calculator, you need to verify what mode. Right now, I'll hit the mode button, and let's note that it's in radians. If at a later point we work with degrees, then it's important that we switch it to degree mode. So let's get out of this. So now let's key in the values. We'll need five times, and then use the pi symbol. Don't use 3.14. And then times, oops, no, we need to actually divide by 2. And that gives us the output of 7.853981634. We'll round this to two decimal places. And approximately, this is 7.85 meters. That's approximate. And 5 pi over 2 is exact. 
Memphis, Tennessee and New Orleans, Louisiana lie approximately on the same meridian. Memphis has latitude 35 degrees north and New Orleans has lat latitude 30 degrees north. Find the distance between the two cities. The radius of the earth is 3,960 miles. So let's draw a model and I'll do one dot is Memphis and the other one is New Orleans. They are along the same meridian. One is 35 degrees north, the other is 30 degrees north. So what we now know is that between the two cities is 5 degrees. Now, what we need to do is find the distance between the two cities. So you're actually looking for the arc length. And we were given that the radius of the Earth is 3,960 miles. So let's use the formula for the arc length, which is S equals R times theta. And we have that same problem, and that is the theta is 5 degrees, but it has to be in radian form. So we'll convert this 5 degrees to radians by multiplying by the factor of pi over 180, and that reduces to pi over 36. Now we'll get S is equal to pi over 36 times the radius of 3960. Let's use our calculator to compute that value. So let's begin. Find the pi. We've got pi. Let's do times. The radius of the Earth is 3,960 miles. And so I'll enter that and then I'll divide that by 36. And I get, we get 345.5 miles. The exact distance is pi over 36 times 3,960, and when it was computed, it was approximately 345 miles. I got a little curious and decided to do a Google map search. And in doing that, I got three different distances and quite a few different um, times for travel, 395 miles, 409 miles, and compared it with the 345 miles we computed. Think about this for a moment. Why are the values different? And how can both Google Maps and our computations be correct? Roman numeral four, area of a circular sector. A circular sector is what you get when you slice a pizza. Okay? In a circle of radius r, the area A of a sector with central angle theta radians is given by A equals one half R squared theta. Find the area of the circular sector with central angle 45 degrees and diameter 30 inches. To find the area of a circular sector, we'll use the circular sector area formula, which is A equals one half radius squared theta. The parts are the radius is 15, theta is given as 45 degrees, but in this formula it has to be in radians. So 45 degrees is equivalent to pi over 4 radians. Let's complete the formula. Area is 1 half, the radius is 15 squared, times pi over 4. We'll leave this answer in exact form. So 15 squared is 225 times pi, and then 2 times 4 in the denominator would be 8. The area of the sector is 225 pi divided by 8 inches squared. Roman numeral 5, circular motion. Linear speed is the rate at which the distance traveled is changing. If distance equals r times t, that's the uniform distance formula, then r is equal to d over t and v is equal to s over t. 
angular speed is the rate at which the central angle is changing. So angular speed is the number of radians this angle changes divided by the time elapsed. Definitions. Suppose a point moves along a circle of radius r and the ray from the center to the point traverses theta radians in time t. Let s equal r theta, the arc length, be the distance the point travels in time t. Then angular speed is equal to omega is equal to theta over t, and linear speed is v equals s over t. A radial saw has a blade with a 6 inch radius. Suppose that the blade spins at a rate of 1000 rpm or revolutions per minute. A. Find the angular speed of the blade in radians per minute. The angular speed is found, that's omega, by theta over time. Time is simple, it's one minute. Theta we have to mess with a little bit. And so for theta, it does 1,000 and one per minute and one revolution is two pi. So the theta is actually 2,000 pi. So when we solve for this by replacing values, theta is 2,000 pi radians per one minute, and we would express this as 2,000 pi radians per minute. Find the linear speed of the saw teeth in feet per second. Part B. Find the linear speed of the saw teeth in feet per second. So linear speed we compute. Velocity is arc length divided by time. From the statement of the problem, we have that currently time is one minute, and we need to solve for the arc length, which is s equals r theta, and the r is six inches, and the theta we computed earlier as 2,000 pi, so the arc length is 12,000 pi. So let's put this into our linear speed formula, which would be 12,000 pi, and this is in inches per minute. But our answers need to be in feet per second. So we've got to do a little bit of dimensional analysis. To change the inches to feet, we know that 12 inches and one foot are equivalent, so that'll change the inches to feet. We also know that one minute and 60 seconds are equivalent. So let's see what happens here. Check in our dimensional analysis. The minutes cancel. The inches cancel, so we get the desired feet per second. We'll leave our answer in exact form, so this will become 12,000 pi divided by 12 times 60 is 720, and that'll reduce to 50 pi over 3 feet per second. Relationship between linear and angular speed. If a point moves along a circle of radius r with angular speed omega, then its linear speed v is given by v equals r times omega.